back to your phone calls from Exeter, California. Patrick, sure. good morning. Hello? Yes, go ahead, Pat. Yes, you know, uh, anymore, the Democratic Party is, is a party of generalizations, misstatements, lies, bad math, bad science, and, and, uh, and a whole lot of people out to enrich themselves. The, 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 the you mean the Trump administration, Finland, right? For example, he's a low-level colonel. Uh, he, 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 he is uh, an employee of the... A low-level colonel? To a tell low level the president colonel? of the Ukraine to ignore what the president said, he shouldn't just be reassigned. He should be put in jail. The, the Mueller report... The, the impeachment, which, which was a, just a travesty uh, of, uh, of criminality on the part of the Democratic it was. Party. The complicity no of this, the GOP was off the charts. Guy like the, what, you just, what, what was just described is really the Trump administration come to life. The idea that Donald Trump, who was quantified, it's not me saying this, Washington Post, fact checkers, he lies so much. I've never been lied to so much by someone I wasn't dating. It's off the charts, the lying from Donald Trump. We're not the ones lying. Donald Trump is. When I give you statistics, and I hope my fellow Democrats give statistics, it's always the truth. There's no need to mislie. Here are the real numbers. If your life is different than those numbers, so be it. If you're doing better than the numbers, that's great. I wish you the best. But let's be blunt about it. The, the idea of defending an attack on a Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman by Donald Trump, who at best deferred from the draft, but in reality, to me, looks like a draft dodger who somehow is healthier now at 72, 73 than when he was at 20? He's like the Benjamin Button of presidents. He gets healthier as he gets older? Are you kidding me? So I'm not trying to change Trump supporters' mindset. And I have to be blunt, and this is not meant to be dismissive of Trump supporters. I respect your views on certain issues. We don't need you. We're going to win without you. We're about getting our base. And here's why I give you the numbers to support that. Since Donald Trump is president, Democrats have flipped nine governorships from red to blue, including Kansas and Kentucky. We have won over 400 state legislative seats since Trump got elected, including November 2019, Virginia. First time in 25 years, we flipped both chambers. That, that's because of Trump. We won the House of Representatives in 2018. Donald Trump was out there campaigning every day. We won 40 seats, and most importantly, we won that vote in total votes in the biggest margin of victory in the history of the midterms, nearly 10 million votes. There are far more of us on our side. I don't just mean Democrats. I mean Republicans and people in the middle who don't want more, four more years of toxic Trump. So defend everything Trump does. That's your prerogative. This is America. We can debate that all day. But at the end of the day, if Democrats come out big, we win big. And that's not a talking point. That's data to back that up. So you can support Trump all day. I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm just trying to animate our base and everyone discussed by Donald Trump to take this nation back. From your perspective, what are the chances that there will be a woman on the ticket, whether for president or vice president? I think a great chance. I mean, I can't quantify it, but I think really very, very good, either the top of the ticket or as a VP. Uh, and I hope it's someone of color as well as on our ticket. But let's see how it plays out. And if our top of our ticket does not reflect America the way it should, then I have every confidence that Democratic president will ensure that their cabinet reflects America. Look at Trump's cabinet. Last time I looked, one African-American, Ben Carson, and maybe one Latino. I'm not sure if there's still one, but it doesn't reflect America. It reflects Donald Trump's view of America, which is, it's not inclusive. There's no doubt about it. Donald Trump has demonized so many communities. So I hope the top, I hope our ticket reflects America, but if not, I know the cabinet and the administration well. Let's go to Mike in Laurel Park, New York, on the Democrats' line. You're on the air with Dean Obadala. Hi, thanks. Uh, Dean, I, I like you taking on these callers that are uh, calling in and, and spreading a lot of nonsense. Um, I'd I like to, to go back to the economic stuff, uh, comparing Trump to Obama. Obama came in in a recession where the unemployment rate was 11 percent. The country lost 40 trillion bucks worth of, of wealth. Um, Mitch McConnell would, wouldn't give him a, give, wouldn't give him a trillion bucks because because of, of debt, and uh, when he handed he handed over he he got a broken down Chevy and handed Trump you know a, a fully loaded Escalade, um, no more uh, color coded terrorist uh, things. Um, 
he dropped the uh, the unemployment rate from 11 to four something. Um, you know, the stock market went up 200 percent. The S&P went up 200 percent under Obama. Um, and Trump has had dropped the unemployment rate half a percent, and he got two trillion bucks. I mean, it's amazing the n- nonsense that, as you said, manufacturing's down, coal producing's down, oil's down. I mean, so many things, man. And uh, I, I just appreciate you taking these people on. Keep it up. Thank, thanks very much. I, I'm not sure if unemployment actually hit 11 percent during Obama. I think, if I remember correctly, around 10 percent. But your point is very well taken. President Obama brought it down significantly, and Donald Trump has just continued on that. I mean, Donald Trump promised, and not to get too wonky with economic stuff, but our gross domestic product, just the, sort of the expression of the output of our nation and goods and services, he promised, point blank, four, five, six percent if he gave him the big tax cut. That's what he said December 2017. We are now below three percent. It's not even as good as the year before. The trend line for our economy is, is sliding and sliding. Trump used all his tricks. He gave a tax cut to the wealthy. They didn't let the money trickle down to the rest of us. They kept it for themselves and gave it for stock buybacks. And the rest of us have to feel like, well, this is as good as it gets. And that's, the, to me, the lie of Donald Trump. But I wish people see through it. This is not as good as it gets. It can be better. With a Democratic president that talks about policies that help the middle class, from earned income tax credits, to tax cut for the middle class, helping lower and people and fighting poverty even the democrats don't talk about people who are in poverty as much as they should there are people who can be elevated with the right policies to help them and don't be afraid democrats to be bold and in the same vein as fdr and lbj and obama in terms of aca we're the party that helps people and to the republicans everything is socialism they call to remind people they call social security socialism they called medicare when lbj proposed it socialism they call the ACA, Obamacare, they call that socialism. The only thing not socialism with the Republicans is a tax cut for their wealthy donors. That's capitalism. Anything that helps the average person is socialism. I wish my fellow Americans, uh, people vote for different reasons. I, I will not say Trump supporters vote against their interests. I don't know what their interests are. I can't tell you what your interest is, but I can tell you this. Democrats are about fighting for the average person and helping those impoverished to move up. Republicans are about the wealthy. That's what they're always about. That's that's bluntly the real world. Let's live it. Let's let's change things. If you want to see it better, you have the power. November third. It is called the Beast. Just this side note from Wink TV. The president, who is in Florida, will be at the Daytona 500. He tweeted about it yesterday, saying, "Remember, we'll be at Daytona 500 tomorrow." The president today serving as the Grand Marshal. He is, by the way, the second U.S. president to participate in this. The first was one of his mm-hmm. predecessors, George W. Bush. We'll go to Lou in Southampton, Massachusetts. Good morning. I just wanted to say that I don't agree with anything this guy has to say. So it seems like it's all Democrats against uh, Republicans here. You know, uh, uh, Trump's done more for this country than of- Obama's ever did. You know, and, uh, you know, you want to talk about poverty, let's look at uh, San Francisco and California with all the, the homeless sitting out there with pooping in the street, peeing in the street. That's right. And that's, all under, and that's under Donald Trump's watch, right? That's under Do- Donald Trump's president. He takes credit for all the good things, but doesn't want to take any responsibility for the bad things. Why is he not responsible for what's going on in San Francisco on his watch? Why do you not hold him responsible for any bad things that go on on his watch? You know, come on. You don't get all the good things and no responsibility for the bad. That's Trump's personal responsibility. You and I, we understand personal responsibility, right? If Trump gets credit for the good, he's got to answer for the bad. Why is he not doing better on those policies? Our next call is from Sugar Grove, North Carolina. Annie, good morning. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Dean. I love your show. Good morning. Um, first, Thank you. First of all, it. you're welcome. <laughs> first of all, I can't believe C-SPAN has Sebastian Gorka on again. I, I, I think he's been on like, like a half a dozen times in the last, I don't know, year. And um, I had seen him last week because I watch Fox and see what they're saying. And I don't know if you're aware of it, Steve, but he's selling some sort of magic pill, you know, that's going to cure everything. He's like a snake oil, oil salesman. And actually, I almost called your comment line to say, man, I hope you don't have uh, Sebastian Gorka on again when I saw that commercial. And I, now I wish I would have because I woke up this morning and he's on your show. Oh, my gosh. Um, now, the health care is. I'm the antidote. Oh. I'm the antidote to Sebastian Gorka. Though. I'm the Muslim are, antidote to Sebastian Gorka. Yeah, you are. He is a snake oil salesman. Check out his commercials for oh, the magic pill. Yeah. I'm not going to debate uh, you. Anyway, the health care, the health care, the pre-existing condition. I was watching the um, the um, budget 
hearings on C-SPAN, my favorite channel. And all the Republicans say is we're going to let it go through the court. We're going to let it go through the courts. Well, do they realize how much anxiety that puts on people's health? The ones that are on the ACA or have insurance through their companies. That's the other thing. People who have insurance through their companies, say they work for Procter & Gamble or, you know, pick somebody where you pay part of your premium and the company pays part. All those ACA protections are going to go away for people who have insurance through their company. What Annie, I'm going to stop you there because right. we're short on time. But thank you for your call and we'll give our guest a chance to respond. We have about a minute left. Sure, uh, absolutely. That's so fundamentally important. The only reason you have coverage for pre and mental conditions, either your private policy or through the ACA, is because of the ACA and Obamacare. That's where it comes from. If Trump has his way in federal court, that's over. And I hope people push their Republicans. You can still like Trump. Go to your Republican town halls, members of Congress, and say, where's your backup plan if Trump wins in federal court to cover me and my family's pre and mental conditions? Press them. They don't have it. So this is not a game. This is real life. So press them on that very issue. Dean Obadala, his work available and heard on Sirius XM, joining us from New York. We thank you for being with us. Please come back again. Thanks for having me. Thanks.